All right. Again, thanks everyone for joining us today. We're here to talk about giving event strategy for Give Back Tahoe. Coming up, uh, hard to believe, just next month because we're already here at the end of October. I'll take a moment to just say that we did host another webinar earlier this month, uh, really diving deep into the basics of Give Back Tahoe and the event and how to set up your page. So we'll cover some of those things briefly today. If you are looking for more information, more detail on really the basics and where to access everything on your page, make sure you go to the givebacktahoe.org website and you can access the recording we have of that first training. My name is Bethany. I work with the Mighty Cause team here. Mighty Cause is the online donation platform that's partnering with the Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation to help uh, support their hosting of this event. We also have um, Ashley from the Community Foundation who will be joining us uh, for a few slides. So I'll introduce her in just a moment so that she can share with us a little bit more about um, the event. Just a quick agenda before I turn it over to her. We'll start with a, a quick overview of Give Back Tahoe for any of you that might be new or just looking for a quick refresher on what the event is really all about. We'll cover briefly some of those basics that I mentioned in terms of using the platform. And then we'll really focus on uh, campaign strategy in particular and what you can do and what you can put into place to help your nonprofit have a successful campaign as a part of Give Back Tahoe. And we'll leave some time at the end for questions. So again, as we move throughout this training, if you do have questions that pop up, please feel free to type them in that questions area on your GoToWebinar control panel, and we'll leave some time at the end to answer any questions. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ashley from the Community Foundation to say a few words. Thank you, Leslie. Um, I'm assuming everyone can hear me okay, since you could hear her okay. Um, so I'm Ashley Cooper. I'm the communications manager at Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation, and I'm also the lead for the Give Back Tahoe giving season. So for those of you who are new to the season or to Give Back Tahoe at all, um, I just wanted to give a little introduction to Tahoe Truckee Community Foundation in the case that you are new to town or new to this campaign and aren't as familiar with what we do. So the community foundation is just like a traditional community foundation in that we look at the health and overall well-being of the entire North Lake Tahoe and Truckee region. Our service area is about Donner Summit down to Folsom and um, includes Truckee all the way over to Tahoma and the state line at um, at Incline Village side. So our mission is to connect people and opportunities to build a more caring, creative, and effective community. Um, and we do this by building resources and just matchmaking, essentially, finding donors, the causes and nonprofits that they are most passionate about, finding nonprofits, volunteers, and donors, and advocates. Um, and a couple things we're working on that you may be familiar with is our local housing crisis. We facilitate the Mountain Housing Council of Tahoe Truckee and led an 18-month regional housing needs assessment study in 2016 that kind of launched all of that. The Community Collaborative of Tahoe Truckee is a program under our organization, and it is comprised of 45 health and human services organizations and agencies in our region who all work together to ensure that the safety net of health and human services agencies is as tight as possible. Um, and we work on forest health, community improvement, et cetera, et cetera. And Give Back Tahoe is a campaign that was launched five years ago in order to elevate the missions of our local nonprofits and to expose you all to a broader base of potential volunteers and donors than you might otherwise reach on your own. It started as a printed guide and online platform, um, and the printed guide was released around Thanksgiving time. And it always has kicked off on Giving Tuesday, the International Day of Giving. 
at its inception, Stacy Caldwell, our CEO at the Community Foundation, and Michael Geldman, the former editor and publisher of Sierra, Sierra Sun, quite a while ago, um, thought that it was easier for us to capture the attention of our second homeowners and vacationers if we extended the giving season from a single day to cover all the way through the 31st of December. A third of all charitable giving is given at the, that last part of the year, and we thought it was our chance to really grab the attention of those people who normally give in their primary residence. So this has been really effective. About 200 donors um, say that this is the first time they've donated to a particular organization with each season. Um, We've also raised over a million dollars and half a million dollars was raised in last year's campaign alone. So of course we're hoping to beat that. Um, and then on the other side of that, the campaign is also primarily actually structured to help nonprofits build their year-end fundraising campaigns. Six years ago when we asked our nonprofits, most of our regional organizations did not have either a fundraising person or a year-end fundraising strategy. And so this was meant as a tool to build everyone's capacity and help you learn how to make the right asks, when to make the right asks, and how to really engage your entire network to be your advocates to reach other people. Um, we also have run challenge grants, um, which we now run in just the first two weeks of the giving season. So Giving Tuesday, the second Tuesday, and the last Tuesday. And they range from awarding nonprofits and donors for one single donation that's randomly selected, and then um, dollars are added to that donation and received by the nonprofit or it's overall donations of $25 or more throughout the entire giving season, or through the first two weeks, sorry. And so those are just meant to boost donor dollars and inspire more giving. So you can switch sides. I was kind of just... So we don't do the printed guide anymore. It wasn't actually correlating with any giving that we could tell. Um, and it was a lot of, it was really resource intensive. The entire campaign is resource intensive for host organizations, community foundations and foundations all over the country host these campaigns. And, and over the last year and maybe the, even the year before that, platforms like Mighty Cause have really started to provide a lot more services so that community foundations aren't giving up all of their staff time and all of their own monetary resources. Um, in order to run a campaign, because what, what essentially happens is our own year-end fundraising campaign has been replaced with this, which is wonderful. Um, and also, it's just even more wonderful to have Mighty Cause help us with customer service and work with nonprofits and provide a platform that's better than any platform we've used in the past and really gives our nonprofits an opportunity for you guys to build out your page with video and images and specific asks, and it gives you um, dominion over your own volunteer opportunities and how you handle your volunteers, how you thank your donors. It's really all inclusive and that's why we're using Mighty Cause now to kind of help shoulder that weight and make it more sustainable. And is there another slide or am I done? Yep, so a lot of people have asked about challenge grants. We are still fundraising for our challenge grants. I have a drafted, um, not official, <laughs> um, challenge grant guideline I can send to you if you want it. Um, our, we've secured business sponsors which help pay for the campaign and we'll be working with print like the back page of Moonshine Inc, radio, um, the online platform and social media. I think that's all I have on the Tahoe Chucky Community Foundation side. And of course, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, and I really just wanted to address that when you are sending me questions, especially about new things like peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, for example, or about building out your 
page since Mighty Cause is the platform that knows how to build out your page and runs the peer-to-peer -peer fundraising side of things. When I send you over to Mighty Cause, I'm not I'm not just trying to get rid of you. It's because that's exactly what they're there for, and um, they're the experts. So I also wanted to address that. Okay, great. Thanks, Ashley. And yeah, of course, uh, from the Mighty Cause side, that's what we're here for. We have a team of customer support representatives that's here to help you with getting your page up and running for uh, the event, the giving season. So feel free to reach out to us directly at support at mightycause.com and we'll help you uh, get through whatever questions uh, that you have so that by the time the giving season kicks off, you are set to go with a great campaign, great campaign page, and you can just focus on the exciting piece of actually receiving the donations and uh, stewarding those donors. So with that, I'm going to keep moving us through here. Uh, as I mentioned, we're gonna start with just a quick refresher on some of the basics for anyone that might have uh, missed our previous webinar or just need a little bit of a refresher here. So once you register for Give Back Tahoe, you will get access to your nonprofit's page on the website. From that, when you log in, you will see your dashboard on the left-hand side of your screen. This is, of course, something that only you as an administrator for your organization will see. Donors aren't seeing all of that. But that's how you can navigate all the different things you may need and want to do to manage your presence on the Give Back Tahoe website. So just a quick rundown of what you have access to on that dashboard. Right at the top, you'll have access to a home screen. That's kind of gonna catch you up on your key metrics uh, of uh, traffic and visits and donation to your page, as well as a to-do list, which will cover uh, some of the most important items that we encourage you to do to make sure that you really have a well-built out page and experience. Moving down the dashboard, the next item that you'll have, um, one of the most important items when it comes to the Give Back Tahoe giving season is your profile page. This is the page that you have access to build out and customize to add photos and videos to really tell the story of why donors should make a donation to your organization. This is the page that you will share. This is the link that you'll share in emails and social media to get donors to give. They will give through this profile page. So we'll talk more about that in just a moment. Moving further down the dashboard, the next item you'll see is your donations. This is uh, the all important way that you can access all of your donor data. Um, you will receive an email notification whenever a donation is made, but at any time throughout the campaign, you can log in and access a real time donation report and download all of your donor data. You also have some opportunity to customize the donor experience, and I'll show you a little bit more of what you can do there in just a moment. Your calls to action tool further down the dashboard, uh, you'll see uh, labeled as a megaphone. This is incredibly important for givebacktahoe.org as this is the way that you can post and manage any volunteer opportunities for your organization. So we'll go over how you can actually do that today, but that's always accessed through the calls to action tool on your dashboard. And then finally, your settings right there at the bottom, that's where you'll manage kind of the overall presence of your organization on the platform. Any of those key settings like updating your address, changing the URL, details like that. So as I mentioned, of course, the profile is really critically important when it comes to preparing your organization for Give Back Tahoe. This is the page that you will be sending all of your supporters to. So this is the page that you really need to spend the time customizing, updating, really making this tell a powerful story to your donors. This is the page that they will visit before they decide to make a donation. So it's your job to use this page to encourage them to make that gift. Share imagery, video, and text that explains what you're fundraising for with this campaign or the impact that your organization has in the community. You've got lots of opportunities to customize the look and feel. You can upload a background image, upload your logo. You can choose a theme color that ties into your logo. 
lots of great things you can do here for easy on-page editing to tell this story. I also mentioned uh, the donation experience. One of the tools that you have access to through the donations tab on your dashboard is the ability to both customize and preview the donation experience. So first is customizing it. You can decide what data is critical for you to collect from your donors, address, phone number, gender, company. You've got a handful of items that you can decide if that's critical for you as an organization to receive that data to do the stewardship that you need to build relationships with these donors. You can request that information when they're making their donation. You can also add custom donation levels. So when a donor goes to make a donation to your page, they can see four preset donation levels, suggested amounts like a $50 gift or a $100 gift, and you have the opportunity to add an explanation to that gift. So for example, if $50 buys uh, 10 meals for a family in need, you can add that information there. If $100 supports uh, five students going through a week of your programming, you can add that there. Every organization will, of course, have different information, different impact levels, but that's your opportunity to really make the gift tangible for the donor. So when it comes time to choose what dollar amount they want to give, they can understand better what you will do with that gift, what impact that gift will really have. So once you've done that, you have the opportunity to preview the donation experience. This is absolutely something I recommend that every nonprofit do before the Give Back Tahoe giving season starts, is preview that experience. Have confidence knowing exactly what that donation process looks like. You can share this with your board of directors or your executive director. That way, you will know exactly what your donors will be experiencing when you send them to the page. And it's important to have that confidence in the experience. Of course, uh, I'll take this moment to mention that the donation process, as long as the, as well as the entire experience that you see on the GiveBackTahoe.org website, is fully optimized and mobile friendly. So uh, it's especially important, of course, that that donation experience is really seamless for donors on mobile, and you can test that as well here. So. Um, really important to take the time to both customize and then preview that experience so you really know what it looks like. And then the second piece of this is the ability to customize the experience post donation. So after a donor makes their gift, they will see a thank you page that you have the opportunity to build and customize. On that thank you page, you can add a video, you can add text, you can add a photo, whatever you want to help effectively say a meaningful thank you to your donors. Always uh, important to make sure that that thank you experience, the content of that thank you page really ties into the messaging you've been using across your campaign. So that if a donor is seeing messages about supporting your after school program, and that's what they see in an email, and when they get to the donation page, they see more information about your after school program, and then they make their gift, great way to really close the loop for the donor is thank them for supporting the after school program by the content that you build in that thank you page. You also have the opportunity to add custom language to the thank you receipt that donors will receive as soon as they uh, make their gift. So you can customize both of those. And similarly there, you can also preview the experience that donors will have so that Again, you feel confident in the whole experience start to finish for any donor that's making a donation to your page for the Give Back Tahoe giving season. I want to make sure everyone's aware of the resources that are available on GiveBackTahoe.org. Uh, right on that site is where you'll access that first training that I mentioned earlier. That training is the one that really digs into all the basics, how to, how to edit your page, how to upload a logo, um, where you can access your donations report, all the detailed information there you can access in that first training, as well as some other tips in terms of um, articles that Mighty Cause support team has put together on how to navigate your page and how to post and manage volunteer opportunities. And there's additional resources available more from a fundraising strategy perspective 
uh, on things that you can build into your giving season campaign. So make sure you take a look at that uh, nonprofit toolkit and uh, borrow as much uh, as you can to help make your campaign successful. So I mentioned earlier, one of the key things, of course, that's important to givebacktahoe.org is the ability to connect nonprofits with volunteers. And so through this platform, you have the ability to post your own specific volunteer opportunities and donors and supporters can sign up for these opportunities right on your page directly. So again, you can access this through the call to actions tool on your dashboard. You'll see that labeled with the megaphone icon. You have the ability to post multiple volunteer opportunities. You'll see a, a form much like what you see here on the page, which is your opportunity to add key details about the opportunity, number of positions, any qualifications that volunteers have to have. You can upload a document if they need to uh, print and sign something before they show up for their volunteer opportunity. All that information you can include in the posting. And then when donors sign up or supporters sign up for these opportunities, you'll have the ability to access those details of those volunteers, download their information, or you can send them an email right through the tool if you have information or reminder about their upcoming volunteer opportunity. What you see here is what a supporter will see when they visit your page and you have volunteer opportunities available. They'll see that big call to action button to see any opportunities that are available. We'll see within a table on your page the ability to see uh, basic information about the opportunity. And then if they click on that, they'll open up more information about the opportunity, as well as the ability to sign up right through this page. Once they do sign up, they'll see they'll receive an email uh, reminding them, letting them know that they've uh, confirmed their sign up for the opportunity. And they'll also receive a reminder once the volunteer opportunity is coming up. So that was just a quick run through of the basics. Again, if you're looking for more detail on the basics, please make sure to visit the nonprofit toolkit and watch that first training that we did. And now we're gonna jump into uh, the focus of today's training, which is campaign strategy. What can you build into your campaign for Give Back Tahoe to help make it really impactful for your nonprofit to raise more funds? So, um, the first thing to keep in mind when it comes to uh, preparing your campaign is the opportunity to secure a matching grant. Uh, as Ashley mentioned, uh, the Community Foundation has some fun challenge grants and prizes that will be awarded throughout the campaign. And for the same reason that those are exciting, your organization individually can secure and offer your own matching grant to kind of replicate that same sense of excitement, urgency, and opportunity for your own donors. So when a donor comes to your campaign for Give Back Tahoe, and they see that if they make a gift, their $25 will be matched, and you'll receive an additional $25 from the matching donor, from the gift you have available, that's really positive encouragement for that donor. It's really exciting for them to see the opportunity for their their donation to go further really makes a difference for donors. So consider how you might be able to build that into your campaign. And when it comes to this, there's a couple of key steps. The first is, of course, to prospect. So start with identifying a list of individuals or groups of individuals that might serve as a prospective donor for a matching grant. A great place to start that everyone has access to, every nonprofit has access to, is your board of directors. Your board of directors is here to support you in many ways. One of those key ways is through fundraising. So whether they have goals to meet by the end of the year and they haven't reached them yet, or whether you have all of the board members combine efforts to make smaller donations each, and you batch that into one larger matching grant that you can offer for your campaign, that's one really great potential idea to consider engaging your board in that way. You may also have a major donor that has given to your organization during 
um, previous years, but they haven't made a gift this year. Great opportunity to connect with that major donor directly and invite them to make that major gift in the form of a match so that you can leverage that for further support from donors and visitors to your page. It's also a good opportunity to connect with any potential corporate sponsors or partners that might have an interest in supporting your organization. A match is a great opportunity to uh, initiate or take advantage of that partnership because often you are able to offer some promotion in return for that donation. So you can share in your emails and social media that such and such local bank has made this match to your organization. So you're giving them the benefit of some additional promotion, which is often helpful and important for those corporate partners when they're deciding how to spend uh, any marketing or community impact dollars that they have. So the first step is prospect. Go through your list of supporters and see who might be a good fit for this. Next, once you've identified a short list of people or prospects, take the time to connect with these donors, cultivate them just as you would any other uh, major gift donor, take time to learn from them. What are their interests? Why, why would they want to make a match like this? Understand their motivations as a donor. And then when you get to the final step of asking them directly to make this match, you can appeal to their interest in particular. So a corporate sponsor might be looking for much different um, things than a major donor might. A corporate sponsor may really need and want that promotion because that's key to their marketing efforts. Whereas a major donor might be much more interested in understanding the impact on your programming, on your community that they could have by offering this match. So take the time to really tailor your ask to the matching donor, depending on what their interest will be. Through the platform, you have the ability to add a match, matching grant to your page. And there's lots of different flexible options of how to do that. You can have a one-to-one -one match. You can have a two-to-one -one match or a three-to-one -one match. You can set up a match so that only the first $25 of every donation gets matched. There's lots of fun things that you can do to allow your donor to be involved in deciding how they want their match dollars to be spent. And just as I suggested with board members, you can either encourage a group of individuals to each make smaller gifts and incorporate them together into one larger match, or you can post multiple opportunities. Perhaps you post one match that's available on Giving Tuesday, the kickoff of the campaign, but you may want to have one uh, sometime in the next few weeks during the challenge grant season, or one on the last day of the year, perhaps to encourage that final push of giving on December 31st. Lots of options there, again, to be creative and think about how you can really use these matches to encourage activity from donors. And one of the key ways that you can do that is by posting that match on your page on the Give Back Tahoe website. So when you do that, it's purely a display function. So the matching donor doesn't need to pay their match through the platform. It's just an opportunity for you to promote and share that match with visitors to your page. So you can recognize the donor if you'd like, you can leave them anonymous if you'd like as well. There will also be a countdown on your page of the time left on the matching grant as well as the dollar value left in the match. So that will really add to the sense of urgency that donors have to make their gift now because they want to be eligible for that match. And this also gives you lots of content and excitement to add into your communication strategy. So that if you do have a match, it's important to make sure you put that in your email campaigns so that donors that are opening an email are encouraged to click through that donate button and get to your page to make a gift because they know not only is it a great campaign to support, but there's also an active matching grant available if they give today. It also gives you a lot to talk about on social media throughout the campaign. You can share progress and updates. $2,000 left of our match or 50% there, whatever it might be. Again, kind of encouraging your supporters to get involved to help you meet that match. 
So moving beyond matching grants, one of the other really exciting strategies to consider when it comes to making the most of your end of year campaign through givebacktahoe.org is activating ambassadors. And an ambassador really can mean a lot of things. Ambassadors can do a lot of different things to support your organization. They can volunteer for you. They can help you spread the word on social media. They can forward your uh, donation page link to their friends and family. There's lots of different ways to engage ambassadors, but we'll talk mostly today about engaging them as peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. And I like to include this graphic here just to really help illustrate the value of peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. Whether it's a strategy you've ever tried before, maybe something you've been a little daunted to try in the past, it's really just an opportunity to activate a few key supporters that have maybe known your organization really well over the years, maybe they've volunteered many times, they've given as a recurring donor, they're really committed and involved in the work that you do. They are a great candidate to become a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. And when they start a campaign on behalf of your organization, they have the opportunity to have their own page, which they can tell their own story about why they love your organization, why it's meaningful, and then they share that page with their friends and family. So immediately you have expanded your network of donors and individuals that will be seeing information and asks to donate to your nonprofit. So right away, key benefit is expanding your network. Amplifying any of the outreach that you are doing as an organization by allowing these individuals to reach out to their own networks on behalf of your organization. So acquiring those new donors and raising more funds because any funds that they raise will of course go directly to your organization. But a couple of other key, um, key benefits are that you have the opportunity to share more personal stories of impact about your organization. So when an individual builds their own peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page, they're often going to include some personal information about why have they volunteered for your organization in the past? Why have they chosen to be on the board of your organization? Why have they stayed involved for 10 years, five years, whatever it is? And that's a personal story that their contacts will connect with. And it also gives you an opportunity as a nonprofit to kind of develop this bank of stories and information personal stories about what your organization means to all different kinds of people. And it's a great opportunity to cultivate the relationship with that fundraiser even more. Once they've started a fundraiser and hosted a fundraiser for your organization, you've kind of advanced your relationship with that donor to a whole new level because they've kind of, they're kind of on the inside. They know what it's like to try to activate and drum up support for your cause. So it's really, an exciting opportunity to consider for all of those reasons. So when it comes to what you should do to really try peer-to-peer -peer fundraising to encourage it as a part of this year's campaign, I just wanted to cover a few key steps here. Um, I'll also mention that Mighty Cause has lots of tools, blog posts, eBooks, webinars, specifically about peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So if it's something that you're looking to learn more about, to really dig into more. We've got lots more resources that you can access beyond just what we'll cover today. First step, similar to that matching grant strategy, is identify potential individuals to start these pages. So not everyone will be a great fit to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser. Again, your board of directors is a great place to start, seeing if they might be willing and interested to start a fundraiser for your organization. But you can expand beyond that. Look at your list of supporters, those volunteers that are really engaged and have supported your organization kind of from the inside before. Maybe look at your social media followers and see who has a really big following on social media. That's a great network that they will be able to tap into when they start their fundraiser. So consider all those things. When you identify a short list of people 
that you might want to encourage to start a fundraiser, reach out to them, especially if it's your first time asking them to do something. Try a personal outreach direct to that individual so that you can help them understand really what's involved, what you're asking for, and how you'll support them through the process. They may not be professional fundraisers like you are or like you are part-time. Um, so it might be, it might just take a little bit of explanation to share what you're asking them to do, which is really to build a page and send that page to their friends and family. So it's simple if you can break it down for them, but, but it might be helpful to have that conversation with them directly and share how you'll help them through the process. So first, always helpful to provide resources, tips, templates that these fundraisers can use. Again, they don't do this all day, every day, so they may not know how to ask for money on behalf of a nonprofit. Uh, some organizations prepare a sample email that fundraisers can use, and all they have to do is copy and paste, plug their link in, and then that's something that they can send out to their friends and family. So think about what you might be able to provide to these people to help make it really easy for them. And again, encourage them to share their story encourage them to share personal details about your organization and the impact that your organization has had on their life, on their family, on their friend, whatever their connection might be. And finally, if you're looking to really step up your game, there are opportunities to create a team fundraiser where you encourage multiple people to start peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers kind of competing against each other in this friendly competition to see who can raise the most for your organization. So a great example of how you might use this is, again, going back to your board of directors, encouraging each of them to start a page, a fundraising page for your organization. You create a team fundraiser that kind of pits all of your boards of board of directors against each other so that they are each encouraged to raise the most funds on their page for your organization. And then you've got this fun kind of leaderboard aspect showing that friendly competition, spurring them on to keep their efforts going. So just something to consider whether you have one individual that you're gonna to try to encourage to start a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser this year or a group of individuals. It can be a really helpful way to amplify all of the other fundraising that you will be doing as a nonprofit for your campaign this year. So moving down the list into covering some other important pieces of strategy to consider for your campaign, email strategy is of course critical. One of the number one ways that you will convert a donor into actually making a donation is through your emails. So important to take some time ahead of the giving season Schedule out what emails you're going to send and when so that you can make sure you have a nice comprehensive plan starting from Giving Tuesday all the way through the end of the year. A couple things to keep in mind to make that strategy really work for you most effectively. Keep your messaging short and sweet. So most of the donors that you are emailing don't work all day every day in your cause. They, they may not understand all of the nuance about your programming and why you do programming in a certain way. So keep it simple for them. Appeal to their interest in making a difference in their community, but keep that messaging simple. Also, really helpful to find ways to segment your audience. So rather than sending one email to every email address that is in your donor database, Think about how you might create groups of donors within that database. Maybe identify and pull out those that haven't made a donation yet this year, but gave last year. That's a great group to target during the end of your campaign this year. Especially for those of you that have participated in previous years for Give Back Tahoe, look at your history of donors that have given to you in previous years on Give Back Tahoe, reach out to them directly, much more likely to make a gift again if they've supported your organization in Give Back Tahoe in the past. 
Look at maybe how you can speak differently to recurring donors and volunteers, people that have shown lots of engagement and support for your organization so far this year. You may want to speak to them a little differently when you ask them to support your Give Back Tahoe campaign. A couple of other things just to always keep in mind, making sure your emails are mobile friendly, just like the donation page and donation experience needs to be mobile friendly, and it is on the Give Back Tahoe website, you need to make sure your emails, the, the channel that donors will access those pages from, are also mobile friendly. So make sure that you've tested and you've seen what it looks like on mobile and the donate button is always big and easy to see and easy to click on. Um, and, and maybe take the time to do some A-B testing and see what subject line seems to grab the attention of your donors more uh, is there an image that you place in one email that gets a better response from donors than another email? Playing around with that, previewing what it's going to look like and testing will make sure that you're doing all that you can to get the most results out of your email plan. Aside from email, of course, social media is one of the main ways that you'll probably want to engage with your supporters throughout the campaign. So there's lots of different channels out there, of course, when it comes to social media. So take the time to see where your audience is and based on that, determine where you're going to focus your energy. It's not necessary that you post on every social media channel there is. It's important to think about where your donors are, where your audience typically responds to. Do you get a lot more engagement on your Facebook page versus your Instagram page? and use that to determine where you want to focus your energy. Again, just like email, you can schedule your posts ahead of time. This might be an opportunity during Give Back Tahoe to consider boosted posts. Where does it make sense to spend a little advertising money to increase the reach that you might have with your social media? Of course, aside from paying for that reach, one of the great ways to increase your reach generally is with creative, engaging content that your supporters are going to want to share on your behalf. Video content is always well received. So think about how you can really make it exciting with those posts. And again, just like on email, make sure that it's always easy for people to find that call to action, the link to actually make a donation and visit your page. The event, the fun, the giving does not, should not end when the giving season ends. So it's really important to think about your follow-up strategy. Think about it ahead of time. Think about it during the event so that as soon as the giving season ends on December 31st, you can really kick into what your follow-up plans are. Um, part of what makes a, an event like Give Back Tahoe so meaningful for an organization is the opportunity to reach new donors and engage donors. But if you ignore, neglect, or don't communicate with these donors, again, until next year's Give Back Tahoe giving season, you are much more likely to lose those donors, not have them come back and repeat another donation or find other ways to get involved. So that communication and engagement outside of the giving season is really important to turn that single donation into a really valued supporter relationship. So of course there are opportunities right on the page as we discussed earlier with the thank you page and the thank you email, but decide where and when you might need personal thank you follow-up beyond that. Maybe donors that give over a certain amount, obviously a matching donor, any, um, anyone that starts a peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser for your campaign deserves that personalized thank you experience, whether it's a call from your executive director or a handwritten note from a board of directors member. Find how you're going to say thank you in that meaningful way. And then sometime in the early new year, January, February, when things kind of calm down and donors aren't really hearing from nonprofits as much, that's a great opportunity for you to follow up and share the details of the impact that you are able to have, your organization is able to have, thanks to the funds that you raised during the giving season. It's just a great opportunity to reconnect with donors and close the loop so that they can feel confident 
that the gift that they gave you was used well. Uh, along with year-round stewardship and communication, really important to take the time to think through any special plans that you might have for brand new donors, first-time donors to your organization that give during the Give Back Tahoe season. They might need a little more support. If it was their first gift, it's important to find ways to welcome them into your organization, make sure they know all the different ways that they could be involved, all the different great work that you do. So it's always helpful to provide uh, a special experience for those first time donors so that you can encourage them to not just be a one time donor to your organization, but create that lasting relationship that will be meaningful throughout the year and ongoing. And with that, we've covered uh, key strategies for Give Back Tahoe. Um, so hopefully you've got lots of ideas to take back as you continue to plan your campaign. Again, as I mentioned, if you're looking for tips on kind of how to build your page and technical tips, you can access that first recording that we did on givebacktahoe.org. And you can always uh, email support at mycause.com with any questions. And um, it looks like so far we only have one question. So if anyone has any questions, feel free to um, add them now. Uh, the only question is, can you send out the slides to our email addresses? Um, and I'm sure that's possible. I coordinate with uh, Ashley at the Community Foundation to make sure that everyone who's registered for today's event uh, or webinar and participating in the event can uh, get access to these trainings. And with that, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. So we'll let everyone get back to their day. Again, feel free to reach out to support at mightycause.com if you have any questions about your page as you're getting your campaign set up. And uh, good luck and happy fundraising. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Bethany.